today i'm going to discuss uh, about uh, discovery of drugs and uh, repurposing strategies so i will be dividing uh, my lecture into two part one is the discovery of drugs by traditional methods or uh, by newer methods like uh, based on the pathophysiology and how uh, the repurposing is possible uh, especially for uh, covid-19 um uh, lack and lack of people who are suffered by uh, coronavirus novel coronavirus and is it is not possible to discover uh, new drugs in a short uh, span of uh, uh, time uh, you know the drug discovery process is the very lengthy way it it takes uh, minimum 15 years so uh, for emergency purpose the existing drugs has to be repurposed for the treatment of covid-19 Uh, first of all uh, i would like to discuss something about the traditional methods of drug discovery actually there was one concept to call the doctrine of signature so what do you mean by doctrine of uh, signature in sense you slice the section of the carrot if you take slice the section of the carrot it looks like our eye if you take slice the section of uh, tomato it looks like our heart it have four chamber tomato is also have four chambers the lycopene the most important antioxidant which is obtained from the tomato is having cardio protective activity uh you take mamadika sarensia bitter corn in tamil it is called bagarkai it is bitter in taste any sweet principle can be nullified by the bitter or any bitter principle can be nullified by the sweet so in that concept uh, bitter cod is used for the treatment of diabetes mellitus beetroot blood red in color which is the vitalizer and it increases production of the rbc so what do you mean by doctrine of signature based on the color shape in shape in sense you know bitter cod ripe the fruits of bitter cod looks like our pancreas the shape size and the characters we can decide what will be the probable pharmacological action of the particular plant the branch is called the doctrine of signature in ancient time we have utilized uh, many uh, medicinal plants it is edible medicinal substances based on the doctrine of signature in 1890s from the willow bark salicin an alkaloid and methyl salicylate an oil was obtained from the bark of willow tree the salicin on hydrolysis on oxidation methyl salicylate on hydrolysis produced to salicylic acid as you know that salicylic acid is an important constituent of wheat field ointment it cannot be given by oral route even though it have analgesic property so we have acetylated to produce acetyl salicylic acid the acetyl salicylic acid is a, is an analgesic but not a very good anti inflammatory so we have modified slightly to produce ibuprofen by isopropyl group and ibuprofen like drugs have gastric hemorrhage as the side effect as you know then all non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs have gastrointestinal hemorrhage so there was preparation of selective cox2 inhibitor like celecoxib rofecoxib ketoricoxib like cox2 inhibitors so this is the journey of the uh, development of non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs starting from the salicin salicylic acid ibuprofen now it is with the selective cox2 inhibitors so even though we are synthesizing some compounds to increase its therapeutic effect and to reduce the adverse effect the structure has to be manipulated to get better and better drug candidate so this is the traditional methods of drug discovery and this is the first pack of aspirin in 1890s by marketed by the company bayer so now the aspirin is 125 years old how it can be repurposed as you know that 
an apple per day keeps the doctors away nowadays an aspirin per day 60 mg or 75 mg of an aspirin per day keeps all the cardiovascular complications away that means aspirin apart from its analgesic and inflammatory property it have anti platelet activity aggregation of the platelets is one of the pathophysiology of myocardial infarction so as the protective measure we have to take aspirin 75 mg daily in case of cardiovascular complication this is called repurposing right now is it possible to get the drugs from the human being we know when you when you discuss what is the sources of drugs plant animals minerals etc etc so nowadays it is also possible to get the drugs from the human now if you see this uh, diagram the number of bacterial gene clusters which are all present in our body around 3000 clusters of bacterial genes present in our body especially in case of female in vagina 495 clusters of bacterial genes were present uh, with that is uh, lactobacillin a compound is uh, obtained from the lactobacillus gasseri it is the microorganism which is enormously present in the vagina called lactobacillus gasseri from where an antibiotic is obtained and that is called the lactobacillin so lactobacillin is an antibiotic obtained from the lactobacillus gasseri a microorganism which is present in the clusters of gene in the vagina around 495 clusters of genes present in the vagina so the researchers have discovered this lactobacillin as an antibiotic for various kind of vaginal infection now the human chronic chondrotrophin which is obtained from the pregnant human is used to induce ovulation in case of unovulatory patients one of the reason for infertility in human is no ovulation so that ovulation can be induced by administration of the human chronic chondrotrophin which is obtained only from the urine of the pregnant human and this gives the explanation why the pregnant women are not getting menstruation as you know that the postponement of menstruation is the indication for pregnancy the fetal placental unit can able to secrete human chronic chondrotrophin which able to maintain the estrogen and progesterone level throughout the pregnancy so that there won't be any menstruation the second example is menotrophin which is obtained from the post menopausal women's urine is the richest source of follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone which is a, which can be used to, to stimulate healthy ovaries to produce ovum the most important example of drugs obtained from the human source is insulin as you know that insulins are previously obtained from the beef and pork which are all allergic in nature after the development of dna recombinant technology by using the plasmid of e coli using dna recombinant technology now it is possible to produce insulin of human origin the urokinase which is again obtained from the human kidney cells uh, have anti thrombolytic activity the recombinant growth hormone which is also obtained from the human is used for the treatment of dwarfism etc so these are all the drugs obtained from the human origin now what is the modern methods of drug discovery and how it is differ from the traditional methods so in traditional method drug discovery process begins with a disease rather than a treatment that means now the drug discovery process is based on the pathophysiology of that particular disease for example as you know that calcium channel blocker as an anti hypertensive anti arrhythmic and anti anxiety means 
calcium channel blocker we will study only in cardiovascular system now calcium ions are involved in pathophysiology of almost all the diseases for example ulcer for example amnesia so is it uh, is it possible to use this calcium channel blocker for the treatment of inflammation or for the treatment of ulcer so that is the new and improved methods of drug discovery now i am going to give uh, an example of drug discovery based on the pathophysiology for that uh, i have taken cancer as a model so here i have given the six possible pathophysiology of cancer one is sustaining proliferative signaling evading growth suppressor activating invasion and metastasis enabling replicative immortality inducing angiogenesis resisting cell death so there are six possibilities six ways by which the cancer can occur in our body i will discuss one by one the first is enabling replicative immortality you can see here this is the normal cells and this is the cancer cell so what the difference we are Uh, observing here is the edge of the chromosomes is made up of telomere this is called telomere for each and every division there will be shorter and shorter of the telomere at one stage there is no telomere present at all in the chromosomes you have to see the figure right in the normal cells there is no telomere at all after the several division whereas in case of cancer cell on the edge of the chromosome telomere the telomere size is maintained you can see here the telomere size of the telomere is maintained so now normal cells undergo apoptosis what is apoptosis programmed cell death is called apoptosis life span of rbc is only 120 days 120 days the rbc will get destroyed a newer and newer blood cells are produced in our body that is called apoptosis in case of cancer cell abnormality in the proliferation of the cell because no shortening of the telomere no apoptosis if there is no apoptosis the proliferation is uncontrolled the replication is uncontrolled so that there is extra growth of cells in our body that is called neoplasms <laughs> 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 so this is the um, most important pathophysiology of the cancer now what you have to do we have to stimulate the apoptosis apoptosis has to be promoted that is the latest method of drug discovery the induction of the apoptosis either by extracellular stimuli caspase or intracellular stimuli apap1 and pro caspase 9 caspase apap1 pro caspase 9 so these are all most important uh, gene which is involved in the apoptosis so this leads to chromatin condensation dna fragmentation protein cleavage and membrane permeability so this is enabling replicative immortality of so inducing angiogenesis angiogenesis is nothing but formation of the newer blood vessels angio means blood vessel genesis means production so newer and newer blood vessels are produced so when if there is uh, you can see here uh, the, this is the extra growth so nearby blood vessels grow into the tumor this is the nearby blood vessels that undergoes uh, enlargement and that leads to supply of blood into this uh, tumor area so for angiogenesis three receptors are very much important one is vascular endothelial growth factor receptor this is vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 
and fibroblast growth factor receptors, platelet derived growth factor receptors. So now, the maintenance of new blood vessels are under the control. Now, what do you have to do? We have to suppress the angiogenesis. The angiogenesis suppression is possible by means of either matrix derived substances or non matrix derived substances, for example, arrest and canstatin, collagen fragments, endorepellin, endostatin, fibulin. So, these are all some of the angiogenesis inhibitors. The third one is sustaining the proliferative signaling. What is meant by sustaining the proliferative signaling? You can see here, these are all the growth factors. These are all the growth factor receptors. These are intracellular signaling, like our cyclic AMP, uh, protein kinase, phosphorylase, uh, ATP, like that. There, there should be some intracellular signaling for the growth of cells. Usually, uh, normal cells rely on positive growth signal from other cell. Between the cells, there will be communication. Cancer cell can reduce their dependence on growth signal by production of their own extracellular growth factor. The abnormal cell can able to produce their own extracellular growth factors or otherwise there will be over expression of the growth factor receptors. So that leads to alterations in the intracellular signaling pathways that leads to the proliferation of the cell. Here you can see your example is a trastus map. This is a monoclonal antibodies. It is commercially it is called Herceptin. So you can see here, this is the pathophysiology of the breast cancer. Almost 20 to 30 percentage of the fertile humans have some of the complications like fibroid in uh, uterus or cyst in ovary, etc. They will be having a, a abnormality in the menstruation, excessive bleeding, something like that. This all leads to the excessive proliferation of the estrogen receptors. So, estrogen is acting on the uh, proliferative phase of endometrium. So, proliferation means self division. So, that leads to uh, formation of the cancer. So, here, here you can give, see, see here, this is head to gene. And these are all the protein receptors. Now, when the HER2 gene is overexpressed, HER2, HER, HER means she, H E R, HER2 gene is overexpressed, automatically there will be overproduction of the uh, estrogen. The estrogen can be able to combine with the protein receptor that leads to the uh, uh, development of breast cancer. Now, what happened? Herceptin, it is, uh, is a monoclonal antibody which is, which is denoted in yellow color. So this Herceptin can be able to form complex with this protein receptor. So, because of this uh, complex, even though the estrogen is uh, present, uh, unable to do the proliferation of the cell, that is the treatment for uh, breast cancer. Previously, tamoxifen used as an estrogen antagonist, but nowadays we are using a uh, trastuzumab Herceptin, which is a drug of choice for the breast cancer. And these are some of the examples of uh, drugs obtained uh, uh, by this particular method. Uh, Cetuximab, uh, you know, these are all uh, some of the drugs. Now, we, now I am going for my second part. So far, what I have discussed is uh, the methods of uh, drug discovery based on the pathophysiology. Now, I am going to discuss about the repurposing of uh, drugs. Uh, repurposing is nothing but uh, the, uh, the existing drug can be used to for some other purpose. For example, now we, we have seen we are studying chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine from long back. If you see any pharmacology book in the treatment of malaria or systemic lupus erythematosus or uh, rheumatoid arthritis, we will be studying about hydroxychloroquine. Now recently, we are all uh, hearing about hydroxychloroquine for the treatment of COVID-19. Uh, one anti-malarial drug or uh, anti-rheumatic drug is used for the treatment of COVID-19. How it is possible? So, 
that is called the repurposing. So repurp this is the definition for repurposing. A process of finding new uses outside the scope of the original medical indication for existing drugs is known as redirecting, repurposing, repositioning, reprofiling, retasking, rescuing and therapeutic switching. It means a particular uh, drugs therapeutic activity switch over to some other activity that is called therapeutic switching. Now, <coughs> this drug repurposing uh, is possible by two ways. One is called computational approach. Another one is called the experimental approach. These are all the experimental approach. One is the binding assays to identify relevant target interaction by using the affinity chromatography and mass spectrophotometry or by means of high throughput screening phenotypic screening using in vitro or in vivo disease model with respect to experimental approach. Whereas with respect to the computational approach, we can see here signature matching, molecular docking, genetic association, pathway mapping, retrospective clinical analysis on novel data sources. Now, you can see almost in all the project work, whether it is M pharmacy project work or PhD project work, they will go for molecular docking. The molecular docking is nothing but bioinformatic modeling which involves the interaction of two or more molecules to give stable adduct. Depending upon the binding property of ligand and target, we can predict the three dimensional structure so based on the docking score and binding energy we can say whether the, whether the molecule is having the particular activity or not. And it's called the molecular docking. So this involves, there are 67 softwares available in the market now. 67 software for molecular docking. Auto dock, like that. So, some of the softwares are freely downloadable. So it is based on the Lipinski rule of 5. Lipinski rule of five will give an idea about the drugs, whether what is the hydrogen bond donor capacity, acceptor capacity, what will be the molecular weight and log p value. An ideal molecule should have a log p value of less than five. A molecular weight should be less than 500 Daltons. Hydrogen bond acceptor should be less than 10. The hydrogen bond donor should be less than five. This is a molecular docking. Signature matching like transcriptomics, I will be discussing afterwards transcriptomics, genetic association, what are all the, whether it is due to genetic defect or overexpression of the gene. Now I have given a HER2 gene is overexpressed in breast cancer, that is genetic association. In pathway mapping, I am going to uh, uh, explain elaborately, retrospective clinical analysis, all these things I am going to explain in detail. Now, what is the generic drugs, novel drugs and the repurposing drugs? Now, the Prime Minister has introduced a scheme called Jan Shati. Jan Shati means Makkal Marindakam. The, medi the medical is for people's, people's medicals. Malivu Vilay Virpane, Malivu Vilay Marindakam. In Tamil it is called Malivu Vilay Marindakam, where we can get the generic drugs. What is meant by generic drugs? Genetic drugs, actually the drugs uh, discovered by somebody, so they have the patent right for 15 years. For first 15 years, a drug is especially, is uh, exclusively, the owner is only one person. All the virtue of uh, at the verge of, uh, at the end of uh, the 14th year, Almost all the companies will come forward to synthesize that particular uh, medicine. So now, the generic drugs actually uh, by the government of India, the medicines were tested by NABL, National Accreditation Board for Laboratories. Like our NBA accreditation or NAC, the laboratories have NABL, National Accreditation Board for Laboratories. So all the generic medicines were, were analyzed, tested by NABL. 
the pradhan mantri bharatiya janshakti pariyojana is a is a campaign pradhan mantri means prime minister bharatiya janshakti pariyojana they have given subsidiary for the starting of this medical stores when the drugs are uh, repurposed repurpose means in, in there is no pre clinical trial there is no phase 1 clinical trial phase 1 clinical trial is healthy human volunteers phase 2 clinical trial is in diseased human volunteers the drug is already evaluated pre clinically and also clinically in that case when you go for repurposing the development cost is only 250000 us dollar when it is novel drug it is 1000 million us dollar time to approval of a marketing authority 12 years for novel drugs but it is repurposed drug only 3 years so now we we are preparing to repurpose the drugs for some diseases right these are all some of the examples right astamizol you know it is a once a day non sedative anti histamine now it is repurposed for malaria damoxifen it is anti cancer just now i discussed it is a estrogen receptor antagonist you now used to for the treatment of leishmaniasis amphetericin b an anti fungal antibiotics is also used for leishmaniasis so these are all some of the drugs which is repurposed for tropical diseases these are all some of the neglected tropical diseases some other examples here you know some drug compounds have been approved for both common as well as rare diseases as in other acetaiopirin used for rheumatoid arthritis now it is used for uh, organ rejection that is renal transplantation colchicin is originally developed for the treatment of gout now it is used for the treatment of fever so like that so many examples i have given the powerpoint presentation is available with the organizers you can get the uh, copy of the powerpoint presentation for your reference now we are coming for this uh, title actually repurposing there are six pathways right the pathway one is drug is serendipitously tested and found to be effective in another disease the best example is thalidomide so thalidomide uh, is a drug for the treatment of morning sickness in 1960s thalidomide was used for the treatment of morning sickness as you know that thalidomide tragedy which is characterized by sealed limbs abnormality in the genesis of organ especially during the first trimester of pregnancy now thalidomide which is reported to be teratogenic used as an antiemetic previously now it is used for the treatment of leprosy and multiple myeloma bifropion it is a drug for the treatment of depression now it is used for the treatment of obesity now what is pathway 2 drug is found to have novel activity that is selectively kills cells in another disease the best example is nelfinavir it is a potential protease inhibitor protease inhibitor in sense definitely it have anti viral activity which was effective against 60 different cancer cell lines in vitro cytotoxicity of nelfinavir against 60 cancer cells were reported so far so nowadays instead of antiviral activity nelfinavir is potentially used for the treatment of cancer the pathway 3 is a drug is found to potentially inhibit a target in another disease example imatinib and sunitinib imatinib is originally for chronic myelial leukemia sunitinib is originally for gastrointestinal stromatal tumor 
nowadays imatinib is used for gastrointestinal stomatal tumor but sunitinib is used for the treatment of pancreatic tumor the pathway 4 is protein is found to be an important target in another disease For example chrysotinib and everolimus as you know that the new role is revealed for an existing target protein what is the existing target protein mtor mammalian target of rapamycin mammalian target of rapamycin is mtor a key protein which is involved in the controlling of cellular growth and division it is a potent target for immunosuppression chrysotinib and everolimus are potent immunosuppressants now everolimus is used for the treatment of pancreatic tumor because the mtor is also involved in the pancreatic tumor so it, this is based on the pathophysiology the alk alk is nothing but anaplastic lymphoma kinase a membrane receptor tyrosine kinase involved in the insulin signaling is also a target for immunosuppression now chrysotinib is also used for the treatment of small lung cancer the pathway 5 is pathway is found to be important in another disease example duloxetine as you know that duloxetine is a anti depressant 5 hydroxy tryptamine or noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor this is 5 ht noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor so it selectively concentrate these amines in the brain so that it is having anti depressant activity now however the 5 hydroxy tryptamine and noradrenaline signaling is also involved in the spinal cord activation and also in the external urethral sphincter so based on this pathway now duloxetine is used for the treatment of uh, chronic muscle skeletal pain or fibromyalgia uh, anti depressant is used for the treatment of fibromyalgia the pathway 6 is again very important Uh, unexpected side effects found during clinical trials that's a there is a drug called minoxidil it is a vasodilator originally developed for the treatment of hypertension when it was consumed by the female they found that there was growth of hair growth of hair in female body is called hirsutism hirsutism is a disorder characterized by growth of hair in female body so minoxidil can able to increase growth of hair in female body so it nowadays it is used for the treatment of alopecia it is converted into a form of lotion now it is applied over the scalp to increase its growth of hair the best example for the repurposing is sildenafil is nothing but viagra Sildenafil is a phosphodiesterase inhibitor used for the treatment of hypertension. It is originally, again, it is originally for the treatment of hypertension by vasodilation. What happens uh, in uh, case of obese individual or alcoholic individual? They have noticed a, a symptom called the erectile dysfunction. erectile dysfunction this is in uh, male erectile dysfunction so because of the erectile dysfunction they are unable to satisfy their female partner uh, so they used to take uh, the sildenafil what happened the sildenafil can able to uh, increases the blood flow to the male sex organ especially to the male sex organ even though it is a vasodilator it increased the blood flow to the male sex organ so nowadays it is used for the treatment of erectile dysfunction so there is a possibility there are there are six pathways by six pathways the repurposing is possible now this is the repurposing of drugs 
for the treatment of uh, SARS-CoV. On these slides, I am showing only for only to demonstrate the pathophysiology. Next slide, I will be discussing about the drugs. Now, this is SARS-CoV structure, you know, the crown-like structure and all those things. Can you able to combine with the uh, alveoli cells? This is the host cell, alveoli lungs, right? By two receptors, one is called AC2 receptors and uh, transmembrane protein protease serine 2, TMPRSS2. Right. After this entry, fusion, there will be uncoating. What uncoating in sense uh, uh, means release of the genome, RNA. This is RNA containing virus. So, this RNA. <coughs> Undergo translation to produce polypeptides, the non structural proteins. With the help of RNA dependent RNA polymerase, there is formation of the newer RNA, newer structural protein that leads to assembly. So, this is the entry point, this is the exit point. These are all the changes which take place in, in host cell. This is the gust cell, this is the host cells, right? So, entry, fusion, Uncoating, translation, RNA synthesize, again translation, assembly and release, budding. The process is called, this is called endocytosis and this is called exocytosis. When this uh, exocytosis takes place, automatically the host cell will get destroyed. This is a pathophysiology of almost all, all virus. Right. Now, how the repurposing is possible in case of SARS-CoV? I said the attachment, and this is uh, developed into uh, four uh, title, four subpart. One is called virus attachment with the ACE2, membrane fusion with the TMPRSS2, and virus entry endocytosis. See, so one is virus attachment, second is membrane fusion, third one is entry. So, ACE2, TMPRSS2, endocytosis. Second process is called uh, proteolysis. This is papain like protease. PL means pap papain like protease. This is chymotrypsin like protease. CL pro means chymotrypsin like protease. PL means papain like protease. That is proteolysis. Then, virus replication by replication complex including RNA dependent RNA polymerase. RNA dependent RNA polymerase. Then fourth one is the re release of cytokine. Now we will discuss repurposing of drugs. Outside uh, this is uh, with uh, ACE2 and transmembrane protease serine 2. So the attachment of the SARS-CoV with ACE2 can be inhibited by the chloroquine. Like that, the attachment of SARS-CoV-2 with the transmembrane protease serine 2 can be inhibited by nafomostate and the camostate. You know what is chloroquine? Nafomostate is a protease inhibitor, have antiviral property. It is an anticoagulant. It is also have anti-cancer property. Camostate is a protease inhibitor used for the treatment of chronic pancreatitis and this is used for post-operative reflux esophagitis. Post-operative reflux esophagitis. For reflux esophagitis, we will be using cisapride. Post-operative reflux esophagitis, we will be using the camostate. We will be using the camostate. So, Nephomostate and gamostate can able to inhibit the attachment of SARS-CoV with the transmembrane protease serine 2. So, this is the first step itself inhibited by this drug cell. Now, endocytosis. This means the entry of a virus. Endocytosis. There is endosome. This endosome has to be acidified for the release of genome. Right, you have to listen carefully. The endosomes has to get acidified 
so that there will be release of genome. The genome is RNA. So the release of genome is by means of endosomal acidification. That endosomal acidification is prevented by chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. This is this one, that's what we are using hydroxychloroquine for the treatment of the SARS-CoV. Right. Now, the low, uh, I said that there are two proteins. One is chymotrypsin-like protease, another one is papain-like protease. Lopinavir, ritonavir, can able to inhibit chymotrypsin-like protease. Disulfiram. Disulfiram is used for alcoholic de-addiction. That inhibits papain-like protease, so that the proteolysis mechanism is getting inhibited by the existing drug after the proteolysis. You can see here formation of the replication complex, including RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. That is inhibited by RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. It is inhibited by ramdesivir and favipravir. Now, favipravir is a very important drug nowadays. And again, the replication complex can also be inhibited by cyclosporin A, which is acting on calcineurin nucleofactor activated T cell pathway. This is cyclosporin. Now, after this, by the process of exocytosis, the virus is coming out. Now, this newly formed virus, SARS-CoV, can be able to interact with the antigen presenting cells, that is called the APC, that leads to release of cytokine. So, the death due to SARS-CoV is cytokine stroke. As you know that, 80% of the SARS-CoV patients are asymptomatic. Only 5% require hospitalization. Now, uh, in, nowadays in Pondicherry, due to lack of hospitals, the SARS-CoV patients are uh, isolated in home itself. Yeah. So, the release of cytokine is a reason for the death. So, the release of cytokine can be able to combine with the interleukin-6 uh, receptor, interleukin-6 receptor. So, that leads to hyperinflammation. The cytokine with the interleukin-6 receptor can be prevented by farilumab and docilizumab. These are all very important drugs for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis. Nowadays, used to reduce hyperinflammation in SARS-CoV patients. The release of Gene, release of uh, the virus can also be inhibited by interferon beta. That means the complex between the antigen presenting cells and the virus can be prevented by the interferon beta. So, so far we have discussed the drugs which is available in the market can be repurposed for the treatment of SARS CoV. And this is an example how uh, the, it produces death after infection with the coronavirus 2 on the lungs. There will be release of so many cytokine that leads to the clinical feature. Now, the most important drug nowadays used is uh, raxo, raxolitinib by uh, Insight and Novartis. These are very famous companies, Insight and Novartis. The drug is under phase 3. Clinical trial. See, this also inhibits the uh, cytokine storm. This uh, this uh, phase three clinical trial was carried out in uh, 350 hospitalized patients, and they have found that it, it reduces the uh, cytokine storm in the susceptible individuals. Now, uh, like uh, dialysis uh, in uh, kidney failure patients or in diabetic patients and there is the possibilities of the dialysis in SARS-CoV patient also for that the Biocon Biologics, Biocon Biologics they have uh, developed a 
yeah, an extra corporeal blood purification device. Extra corporeal blood purification device that is called the cytosorb means the cytokine will get absorbed. Whatever the cytokine which is present in the blood of the SARS-CoV patients will get absorbed. So for, for this we have the government of India, Drugs Controller General of India have given approval on May 27th, 2020. So this is USA FDA recently approved cytosorb for emergency use in COVID-19 patients. USFD has given approval. Now the government of India is also given a approval. So this device is used, the, the goal of cytosol therapy is to reduce cytokine, uh, cytokine strome and deadly inflammatory response through blood purification. This is one of the devices used for the purification of the blood from the cytokine. This is very important thing. Now, if you see here, what is the status of uh, vaccines development in the uh, uh, world? Around 12, uh, 12 vaccines are under trial. Uh, in China, 4, uh, US, uh, 2, German, 1, UK, 2, Australia, 1, and in India, 2. One is by Zydes Cadilla, another one is Bharat Biotech. These are all in uh, uh, phase 1. China, this is the status of July 9, 2020. Uh, now, in, in China, uh, you can see CanSino Biology, Biological Beijing Institute of Biotech. In almost uh, they have developed the vaccines for SARS CoV. Now it can come into the market. Whereas, other, uh, the year, AstraZeneca is in uh, uh, phase 3 clinical trial. AstraZeneca is phase 3 clinical trial. This is the COVID-19 vaccine tracker. Now the plasma therapy, how it works. Here, these are COVID-19 patients. When he is recovered, the plasma can be blood can be isolated. The plasma alone is transfused to the COVID-19 patients. So what is the reason? Once a person recovers from the COVID-19, automatically she he or she develop antibodies. That antibodies will be present in the plasma or the liquid part of the blood. That antibody can be injected into the new COVID-19 patients. It is a very simple process. Only plasma is retrieved from the donor blood. And the rest of the blood is returned to the donor itself. This is the reason advancement in the, in the SARS-CoV. Right. The company, the Glenmark, uh, has, has introduced the Favipravir for the treatment of uh, SARS-CoV-2. And now I would like to compare the, what is the role of Favipravir in uh, SARS-CoV. Uh, and what happened in early stages and later stages. In early stages, the viral replication is high, can be controlled with the antiviral drugs. Early symptoms of SARS-CoV can be controlled by antiviral drugs, but not in the latter stages. That is very important. In latter stages, that is severe and critical stages, there is no role of antiviral drugs in SARS-CoV. Because in early stages, the uh, immune response medical damage is less, whereas in latter stages, it is uh, more severe, so they require the ventilators for survival. Ventilator means uh, you have to see the oxygen tension, oxygen concentration you have to modify. And, uh, now uh, each and every family should have an oximeter, an oxy pulse meter. You have to see the oxygen level and also we have to see, see the pulse level in SARS-CoV patients. Now, the Glenmark has given five reasons why it is used for SARS-CoV because it has proven in vitro activity against SARS-CoV-2. By in vitro, it was found to be potent the inhibitor of SARS-CoV and it has wide therapeutic safety margin. That means uh, the, uh, the LD50, you know what is mean by uh, safety index. The safety index is uh, more uh, for Favipravir. 
and it has shown promising result in couple of studies in china it, it has been uh, clinically uh, uh, given to the patients and uh, they have the success rate uh, more success rate the peculiarity of five private is the it is an oral product it can be given in the form of tablet and uh, the another most important milestone for uh, five private is it was already used for an another pandemic called influenza in japan during the influenza virus infection in japan it is also said to be a pandemic it was already approved right now it was approved for another pandemic that is uh, sars cov uh, the five private is uh, inhibits rna dependent rna polymerase you know what is dna dependent rna polymerase rifampicin is the dna dependent rna polymerase inhibitor pavipravir is rna dependent rna polymerase now reason advancement is pavipravir with ubipinavir we you know the synergism 1 plus 1 is equal to 3 synergism pavipravir inhibits rna dependent rna polymerase whereas ubipinavir is in fact with virus attachment fusion with the infected cell so at once one end the fusion is inhibited in another end the replication complex is inhibited so glenmark proposes a combined use of existing antiviral drugs pavipravir and ubipinavir both were already used for some other pandemics like novel flu or influenza virus now hydroxychloroquine what is the role of hydroxychloroquine i said uh, endosomal acidification is required for the release of a genome this is the genome rna this is sars cov so endosom endosomal acidification is important now hydroxychloroquine is an is, is uh, used for the treatment of malaria is a weak base so when you administer a weak base there may be chances of increase of the ph of endolysosomes so the acidification of the endosome is getting inhibited no release of genome from the virus okay it is a very simple mechanism now is there is there any possibilities of utilization of some other weaker base for the treatment of sars cov this is also under the, the study now we know acitromycin any any mycin acitromycin roxithromycin erythromycin are used for the treatment of throat infection throat means throat acitromycin so now what happens if you combinedly administer hydroxychloroquine with acitromycin this is the this is the report uh, published in the international journal of antimicrobial agents in 20th march 2020 that means in wuhan uh, it was uh, now but december it was noticed during 2019 now what happens they have taken 42 covid 19 patients 42 covid 19 patients in uh, in a hospital uh, out, out of these 16 patients received the normal care no treatment no hydroxychloroquine no acitromycin 16 patients the remaining 26 patients were treated with the hydroxychloroquine 16 patients no drugs 26 patients with the hydroxychloroquine right now out of these 26 hydroxychloroquine treated patients 20 completed the study remaining 6 received the acitromycin so 20 only the uh, hydroxychloroquine and 6 received the acitromycin and also the hydroxychloroquine what is the result the 16 patients under normal care half of the 14 hydroxychloroquine chloroquine treated patients were reported pcr positive no rt pcr is the confirmed test for novel coronavirus so 16 controlled patients half of the 14 hydroxychloroquine treated patients were reported pcr positive whereas hydroxychloroquine and acitromycin treated patients six patients you know six patients were treated with hydroxychloroquine and acitromycin they have found negative 
for COVID-19. The conclusion of this study is combined administration of the hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin have a potent uh, inhibitory activity on COVID-19. Right. Now, the role of ACE inhibitor, we, are, we have been discussing about ACE. So, what is ACE? Uh, is an angiotensin converting enzyme that inhibitors are used for the treatment of hypertension. Now, what happens now? You can see here the angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 by cleavage of two amino acids. It is by cleavage of two amino acids, angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2. This angiotensin 2, by cleaving one amino acid with the help of ACE2, it is converted into angiotensin 1 to 7. This is a normal process. So what happens when we are infected with the SARS-CoV, the SARS-CoV form complex with the ACE2. So, AC angiotensin converting enzyme 2 is not available for the conversion of angiotensin 2 into angiotensin 1 to 7. What happened? There will be enormous increase of the angiotensin 2. So that is the reason for the symptoms of SARS-CoV. So if we utilize the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 inhibitors, automatically there may be uh, less virulence of the SARS-CoV. Right. Now, <coughs> repurposing of uh, another 5-10 minutes I will discuss. Repurposing of drugs for the uh, for treatment of cancer, it is called redirect. Re redirect. Aspirin. Uh, as, aspirin we know as an uh, analgesic. Nitroglycine as we know that it is uh, for angina pectoris and uh, beta blockers we know as a uh, anti-hypertensive, anti-anginal drugs. Aspirin reduces the risk of cancer by fighting inflammation. Chronic or prolonged inflammation can create an environment in which cancer cells grow easily. Wherever the inflammation is more, in that place the uh, growth of cancer cell is more. There is possibilities of the nitroglycerin for the treatment of lung cancer by increasing the production of the endothelium derived relaxing factor, as you know what this is a mechanism of nitroglycerin, it have anti-angiogenic property, pro-apoptotic mechanism, it can be used for the treatment of cancer. Beta blocker can boost immunotherapy in patients with advanced melanoma. Beta blockers can be used for the treatment of melanoma. These are all in the trial with phase 3, 2 and phase 2. That may be chances of uh, repurposing of drugs for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Especially some of the anti-diabetic like metformin, they reduce the risk of dementia in 24% of the uh, patients without anti-diabetic compounds. Sulfonylureas can able to reduce uh, the chances 15 percentage. Citalopram is an antidepressant. May help to reduce the agitation in people with a dementia. Antihistaminic drugs can also be used for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. So this is a repurposing of uh, uh, some drugs for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Okay. Uh, I think uh, this is, uh, I will discuss one thing. Now, <coughs> how target should be developed for genetic disease? Uh, this is uh, the success rate of uh, uh, drugs in many diseases. Yeah, the success rate can be increased by giving the right drug at the right dose to the right patients to the right time. And this can be improved by uh, called the pharmacogenomics. Now in pharmacogenomics, how target should be developed for genetic disease? If a gene is missing or defective, you replace the protein or replace the activity. If a gene is overexpressed, you develop inhibitors of synthesize or activity. That's what I have discussed in uh, uh, Tastisumab. Now, the DNA sequence of all human beings is 99.9% .9 identical. We are all identical 99.9%. 
only 0.1% changes in our DNA, can able to produce 3 million separate spelling mistakes in a genome of 3 billion pieces. That is the reason why uh, uh, inter-individual variation occurs. Now we can see here, this is a wild type protein. If your genome have wild type protein, normal activity. If uh, amino acid, excess amino acid substitution or alteration in the splice variant or protein truncation, there may be alteration in the activity. The gene is deleted, no activity. If the gene is overexpressed, then increased activity. So what happened here? The gene has to be substituted. Here the gene uh, has to be gene replication, that is uh, overexpression has to be inhibited. This is the basic of a, a treatment for genetic disorder. Right. Now we see here genomics in cancer drug discovery. Now a patient with a, a sarcoma has admitted in the hospital. First, what is the clinical outcome? You will see whether they are resistant or sensitive to particular drug. If he is sensitive, no problem. If he is resistant to a particular drug, now we have to see for gene expression profile of the tumoral tissue or DNA repair capability of the blood sample. After studying this gene expression profile or DNA repair capability, we can go for a development of drugs in a particular disease. So with this I am concluding my lecture. If you have any queries, you can ask. I see only one slide I would like to express here uh, related to pharmacogenomics. Uh, FDA has approved a particular drug called Pidil. Pidil is nothing but the uh, composition of uh, hydralazine with isosorbate dinitrate. So this particular uh, composition uh, was effective only in uh, black people, not with the white. So this leads to uh, uh, development of racism. So a particular, a particular drug has to be given only for black individual, not with the white. So that leads to development of racism. This is called a uh, tailored medicine or personalized medicine for that particular patients. So with this, I am concluding my lecture. If you have any doubt, you can ask.